while they were praying, they were trying to figure out how to pay the bills. You can't be in a place of prayer and be worried at the same time. Yes. The, the, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. That simply means that when you are praying, you pray violently. Now I've come to understand that a lot of you Americans accuse me of being violent in prayer because I'm African. This has nothing to do with where I come from, but it's everything to do with knowing the realm of the spirit. That the devil doesn't respect how calm you come to him, but the devil will respect violence. Yes, he will. For yes. since the days of John the Baptist until now, yes. the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent. I, I want to I wanna preach to the violent people that are saying enough is enough. I will not spend the rest of my life living under the devil's yoke. I refuse to be a preacher preaching to people that are bound. Enough is enough. How many of you are willing to be violent in your prayers today? I don't care if the neighbors, I remember I used to be in an apartment and I'm praying, stamping the floor. And then I hear there's a bang on the door and four police officers showed up. They said, we understand there's a fight. I say, yes, I'm glad you came. Please come on in. The devil's going to need your help. I said there's a whooping of his lifetime. I said I'm so sick and tired of being single. I'm sick and tired of living under a curse. I'm sick and tired. And the more I spoke, the more uncomfortable the police were becoming. Come on. The violent will take it by force. Come on, tell your neighbor, pray violently. So God is not looking for you to sit down on the chair. Instead of you praying, you are just looking around and thinking, no, baby, you gotta get up and begin to walk around and raise your voice and stop your feet and clap your hands and let every demon know enough is enough. You gotta go. Come on. God wants you to pray because your life depends on it. Because your church depends on it. Because your children depend on it. Your finances depend on it. Your well-being, your health, your happiness, your joy. If you don't pray, you are simply mortgaging your life to the devil. So when you pray, you don't pray quietly and you pray dignified. Because some of you are too pretty to be nasty when you pray. But, but God is looking for some of you to be like Jesus. Bishop, when Jesus went to the graveyard of Lazarus, Jesus could have been just motioning with his hands and do some sign language and Lazarus would have come out. Jesus could have whispered and Lazarus could have come out. But the problem is Lazarus was held as a captive. By a spirit of death. Yeah. So if Jesus has to set Lazarus free, he has to raise his voice. He has to be screaming. Tell your neighbor, raise your voice. As a warrior, it's a war cry. Come on. It's a war cry. As I was in prayer, the Holy Spirit showed me that the church has traded places. You find more nightclubs are loud and more churches are quiet. You can find more people making noise at the mortuary. But you come to churches, you find people who are walking zombies. No wonder we ain't seeing the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit of God is the Spirit of sound. On the day of Pentecost, while they were together, the Bible says there was a sound from heaven. But the sound from heaven could not come until the disciples made a sound. So the sound responds to sound. Without a sound, you will not have a breakthrough. Without a sound, you will not see miracles. Without a sound, witches will never leave you. 
But I prophesy today that after tonight, every witch will hear your sound. They will back out of your life. So God is looking for prayer warriors that are not afraid to make a sound. Because Jesus lifted up his voice. He first of all said, Lord, I thank you. And then he screamed. When Jesus screamed, the spirit of death that was holding Lazarus, it recognized authority. Tonight, as you scream, as you pray loud, as you stamp your feet, clap your hands, I decree that every death that has killed joy in your church has to let you go. I prophesy this Sunday, you will have a service like never before because the spirit of life is the spirit of sound. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, shout, shout unto, the Lord. unto the Lord. The Bible tells us, make a joyful noise. You find today people in a crack house make a joyful noise. And people in the church, they look depressed. They look confused, like they don't know why they came. God is looking for a church that has prayer warriors that know that every time it's church time, it's war time. It's time to pull down the stronghold, pull down principalities, pull down lying spirits, pull down accusing spirits. Tell your neighbor, pull them down. So prayer is a weapon, but this ain't no our father who are in heaven, that kind of a prayer. That prayer you go to every witch doctor's house, they are there. But God is looking for a radical prayer. God is looking for a radical intercessor. These are women that would go lay down in bed and make sure the husband falls asleep and sneak out of bed and walk into the closet. Oh, we don't have those kind of women in here. These are women that would shut, that they would, they would turn on the water in the shower and break out a prayer and start saying, devil, not my husband, devil. Not my husband, devil. You can mess with every other husband, but my husband is delivered. I release his mind. I release his eyes. I release the blind. I release his finances. I release his company. I release his ministry. My God, my God, my God. God is not looking for sexy prayer warriors. God is looking for prayer warriors who don't care how they look. They don't care if they have makeup on or not. But what they want is to see results. They want to see breakthrough. They want to see healing. They want to see deliverance. So I'm sorry if I didn't come to church and acknowledge your shoes and your handbag. We didn't come for a beauty contest, I came for war. I came because the devil is after my house. The devil is after my children. The devil is after my ministry. The devil is after my car, my finances, my bloodline. But I wanna make sure as long as I'm alive, the devil's wish will never be successful over my life. Tell your neighbor, pray. So prayer is a weapon. Put the scripture back over there. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are what mighty. How many of you know your prayers? When you pray by faith and you are righteous, your prayers are mighty. Oh, oh, one amen. The rest of you are like, I didn't know that. But the prayers are mighty. There are some of you. When you go there, you will find that some of your neighbors have relocated overnight because the prayers you are praying here cannot allow the witches to live. A few feet away from your houses. Oh, you guys are too quiet on me today. And, and that's the problem we have is we have many of us who are making the witches comfortable in our community. One of you gotta move and I refuse because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yeah. Devils don't know how much prayer you pray to move into the house and I refuse to run from the witches. I declare war on every witch. Several years ago, we moved into the community and uh, 
And so now stay with me, stay with me. Because some of you have been caught up in that lie and the devil has put you in a place of low self-esteem and the devil is making you and, 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 and just feel sorry for yourself. And so we move in there and all of a sudden the entire neighborhood is against us. We, we would pull into a house and find a note on the door. These people, and I'm thinking, oh, it's because I'm black. Oh, it's because I'm black. And you know, some of you have been caught up in that lie. That foolishness. Of, there's nothing special about you and your blackness. There, 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 there's nothing special. I know you're black and lovely, but that don't care. It don't make you special in the eyes of the devil. Come on, somebody. I know black people that are more cute than you. And yet the devil don't even know where they live. But the reason the devil is coming after you and sending witches after one after another is because there's something in your prayers that makes the witches feel uncomfortable in your places of work, in the places where you stay. That's why every night they come and they're chanting over their house. It's nothing to do with your whiteness, but it's your prayer. Oh, I can't believe they are racist. It's nothing to do with racism. It's a demon in them that makes them react out of anger towards you. So for eight years, I was in that deception. We, 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 we got to the point where we headed going home. Then one night, I said to the Lord, Lord, what is going on here? He said, it took you eight years to ask me, huh? How dumb you are. Literally, literally. Yeah, yeah. Be because I was fighting spiritual warfare in the physical. Right. Yeah. And I can guarantee you, I don't care how smart you are, you cannot outsmart the devil. Yeah, sure. Come on. Come on. Listen. You cannot. No, Listen. no. You cannot. Jesus stood up and he said, Be smart like the what? Serpent. Now we are not talking about the Texas rattlesnakes. <laughs> He's talking about the demonic spirits. Uh, yeah. These are the principalities that can actually pinpoint a person and safely guard that person until he becomes president. Mm. During interviews, the man would be carefully guarded by demons to speak deception and charm the entire nation. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Those kind of spirits. That is what we are fighting for. And you cannot fight it with your natural intelligence. Oh, yeah. Am I talking to somebody tonight? Yeah. This is our last night. You're we're going to go with the bang. We're going to have to let the devil know that enough is enough. And it's game over for you. Yeah. Come on somebody. I said it's game, game over. So after that night, the Lord came to me in the sleep. And he said, I want to show you what's happening to you. And then the Lord took me by hand in the, in the spirit at night. And then he opened the door to, from the bedroom into the living room. And then he says, now follow me to the outside door and open the door. And there is this one of my neighbors putting witchcraft on the door. Oh, and I see her. And the Lord says, this is why they don't want you here. Ever since you moved here, they can't operate. Because at night, whenever you start praying, there's a mist, a glory that fills up the entire community. Their witchcraft is annoyed and it malfunctions. So they have to get you out of here. But you are caught up in the flesh. And I can see some of you, some of you are just like me. You are thinking it's, it's your, it's because they are jealous of your car. They are the, the jealous, the devil drives a better car. It's a spirit car. It doesn't drive a physical car. He don't need your car. He doesn't need your house. He doesn't need your money. And it's not your education. And baby, it's not your figure. It's not your muscle. It's your spirit. The devil wants you out of your community. Yes. It's the truth. So don't be ignorant. And I said to the Lord, what do I do? He said, you got to speak. Yeah. You got to speak. Tell your neighbor, don't be silent. Don't be silent. Come on, tell them like you're mad at them for being silent. Don't be 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 silent. Because, Bishop, you know this, but what, what witches, they do what is known as chanting. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. Come on, somebody. They do yeah. what is known as chanting. Chanting is simply summoning spirits or voodoo or witchcraft. Yeah. And many of them have come into your churches and you think they are praying when they are actually chanting. Yes. So if you are going to outmaneuver them, you have to pray back. Yes. Yes. That's why Nigerians, they say back to the sender. Yes. Whatever you are praying against me, you are chanting every voodoo against me. I reverse it in the name of Jesus. Oh, David says, Lord, let them fall in their own traps. If you are praying that I lose my sight, 
back on you. If you are praying, I have high blood pressure back on you. If you are praying, my church go empty. Lord, fill it up until there's no room. Tell your neighbor back to the sender. So then I stood up. I stood up and I spoke. I said, any person who's going to stand here and put another curse, that's the night they die. Mm. Oh. oh, yeah. It's either me or them, and I choose me. Yeah. I have a purpose, I have a destiny, and I want to live. Yes. Come on, somebody. Some of you are just too nice. Uh -uh. I got kids to raise, baby. Come on, somebody. I am not going to leave my kids as orphans. Uh -uh. Lord, whoever sends this curse of death, make that joker make a U-turn. The same address it came from, go back into there. And I went into Bakabo Shandapa, Redeke Shandapa. For the Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. Africans, we don't play with witches, baby. It's either you or them. But I have an assignment, baby. I have the righteousness of God. I got 120 years to live. So I refuse to have the witches speak over me. And I'm trying to be nice and all sanctified. Oh, have mercy on them. The devil is a liar. The next witch who speaks over you, may God strike them with lightning. Because you are the anointed man and woman of God. Like I said yesterday, some of us are too naive. We want to save people who don't want to be saved. They have a lifelong pact with the devil. They cannot be saved. Those are not people you want to keep in your neighborhood. You hand them over to the Lord. I said you hand them over to the Lord. And you say, God, the same angel who came in Egypt and slaughtered the Egyptians who refused to put the blood of the lamb, let the same angel show up. But I refuse to have my children live under a curse. So we are driving out of my 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 uh out of my driveway and i look up and i see my neighbor and she's waving and i turned around i said she'll be dead in two days and drove off then we didn't see her in five days and then we see a younger woman moving stuff out of th four or five days later we see a younger woman moving stuff out of a house and I stopped over and I look at my wife. I said, I really have to know if I'm a real prophet or not. Because I do know that. <laughs> but I have to know. Yeah, you want to change. And I wrote the window down. I said, excuse me, young lady. I've never seen you before. Uh, who are you? And she goes, oh, I'm, I'm her daughter. Mama passed a few days ago. And I said, okay. Roll the window up and I go. Yeah. So it's either me. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you are silent, you will be very victimized all the days of your life yeah. Yeah. and many of you you take prayer for granted yeah. you take prayer as child play yeah. you know that this is life or death yeah. it's life or death there are some people that are determined they have sown their entire allegiance is to kill you it is yeah these are people that will put spells over you. Yeah. That when you get on the highway, you're going to get in an accident. These are people that will curse you with a, with a, with a heart attack or a stroke. And these are not people you want to just leave them and just hope that they change their mind. No, it's a sword for a sword. It's a spade for a spurred. It's a word for a word. The Bible says, and the God who answers by fire, let him be God. Let him be God. Come on, Tambali, tell your neighbor, pray. Yeah. Effective prayer. Yeah. I want you to go home and teach your intercessors how to pray like warriors. Yeah. Don't allow them to be praying with a cup of coffee. They don't need that junk. They need the Holy Spirit to revitalize them. If they can't pray without coffee, let them stay home. If you can get your two people that can pray in spirit and in truth, then start from there. 
and don't let them come and start explaining what happened. We don't want to know who did what. When they come in, it's war. We don't have to know how it happened, who did what. If you just come over there, drop your hand back, leave the baby in the corner, throw off your shoes, take off your hearing, and go into prayer. Mandeke, Shayarabaka, let the church arise. Every witchcraft in the church be broken. Every witch, repent or go in the name of Scripture one more time, please. The, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. Mighty. Yeah. Mighty in God. Mighty. They are mighty in God. Mighty. Prayers are intercontinental mm. ballistic mm. weapons. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Come on. George Bush went into Iraq looking for weapons of mass destruction. When he should have come to the rock church, we got some. Yeah. 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 You, 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 know, no, you guys didn't hear me. I, I said weapons of mass destruction. When you pray at the rock, something starts happening in Chicago. It's a weapon of mass. mass not one by one. Mass, 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 mass. I release the weapons in your hands, in your mouth, in your... For the pulling down of what? Stronghold. How much time do I have, Bishop? All you want. All you want. You for the strongholds of what? Come on, for the pulling down of the what? Strongholds. Now, a stronghold is a spirit that has been put in place, which is responsible to mold the community, the city, the state, or the country after its own character. These are spirits that would get on the life of a man who is going to be modeled after the spirit and then his children are going to be just like him and then the grandchildren will be just like him and then the great grandchildren are going to be just like him that's the reason you find there are some families where nobody keep their marriage because there is a stronghold on that family i don't care baby how sexy you are the guy will find a reason to leave you you guys are quiet on me Come on, somebody talk to me. I don't care how good your fried chicken is. He will still find some. I don't care. You could provide all she wants, but she'll still find a reason to leave you. Because there's a stronghold. And I don't want you to be naive and thinking, I don't know why my husband, it's not him, baby. It's a spirit from his father and their father. That's the reason before you get married, you start breaking stuff out of the door. Who's going to pop the question? You said, the moment you marry me, everything that ever came out of your daddy got to go. Amen. I don't know, you guys are too quiet on me today. But God is raising warriors. I refuse to have my child getting married to a guy whose, whose fathers were incarcerated, they were drug addicts, because generational spirits, they move from generation to generation. So if you're going to marry my daughter, I'm going to make sure you are delivered. Come on parents, talk to me. Because if you don't, then one day you're going to have to take your, 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 your son-in-law out of the rehab, take him. You want to make sure he's delivered. He's delivered. He's delivered. No wonder some of us, we, 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 we don't even know how to handle what our kids are going through. It's because your daddy's daddy knows where the demons are coming from. There are some of us, our finances are cursed because there is a stronghold of poverty. And no matter how hard we work, every time we build, we are just about to relax and drink some cool and something happens and snatches money out of our life. It's not that we bad, we make bad financial decisions. It's a stronghold. There are strongholds that are built in areas that are anti-church, anti-Christian, anti-revival, yeah. anti-prophecy. Yeah. These are spirits that just yeah. come to take over a city. That's why before you start a church, pray. pray. If you don't believe me, go to the city of Samaria. After Jesus in John chapter 4 preached and the whole city came to Jesus. 40 years later, the city of Samaria is living under a man called Simon the sorcerer who bewitched an entire city. Oh, yeah. Simon was the sorcerer. Yeah. Yes, 
as long as Simon is alive and well and, and still are, are operating in that witchcraft, no one gets saved in that city. And some of you want to quit ministry without knowing that it's not you. It's the spirit where you are operating from. You preach well when you're on the road, but when you go to your own church, nobody want to listen to you. Everybody, including your mother-in-law, is falling asleep. Come on, you're somebody. Talk to me tonight. Come on, tell your neighbor, break every stronghold. Pull them down. Pull them down. God's weapon that he has given us, they are able to dismantle everything that has ever taken root in these communities. Every spirit for 400 or 40 years that says there will not be a revival in that city. When you show up, that spirit has to go down. That's why some of us, we got to do whatever we have to do to make sure that demon is gone. Tell your husband, honey, tomorrow we're going to go for a walk. Yeah. Put on some walking shoes and start walking around. What are you doing? Prayer walk, baby. Shanda Kamoko. From every place, the sole of your feet, trains have given it over to you. Come on, somebody. You begin to declare in the name of Jesus every witchcraft in the area, every idolatry in the area, every drug addiction in the area, in the mighty name, be broken now. Tell your neighbor, pull them down. I know pastors that cannot function in certain cities, but in other cities they are doing very well. Because they are in a, in a city that is cursed. They are people, when they relocate, they go somewhere, they make money, they go home, they are broke. There's a stronghold. You look at cities like Las Vegas. You don't have to be a gambler for you to gamble. The moment you go to Las Vegas, that anointing comes upon you. You'll be calling your wife, hey honey, can you wire me $300? <laughs> what happened to the money for, you know, what had happened was, <laughs> it's because you went under the stronghold of gambling. You go to Texas, there's a stronghold called religion. You find people with weed in one hand and they're talking to you about how I go to church. Why? It's a stronghold over the city. Jesus says no one can walk into a strong man's house without first of all binding the stronghold, the strong man, and then taking the position. He's talking to people. Many people are bound. They are property of the devil. That's what the devil said. Luke chapter 4, John chapter, uh, uh, Luke chapter 4, and Matthew chapter 4. Jesus was told by the devil, look at the kingdoms and their glory. They all belong to who? Me. And I give them to whoever I wish or I please. And you are thinking you and your diploma from a theological school, you're going to go and do radical stuff. That's not going to scare them witches. That's not going to make the demons leave the place. My prayer like Bishop has done over the past 53, 54 years this year, has established a church. Because first he went in the realm of the spirit and declared a portal over heaven and pulling down stronghold. That even after the bishop has gone to be with the Lord, the church is still running. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on, guys. This is not child's play. This is life. We are at war. But we got to make sure tonight before you go to bed, you start going after these strongholds, pulling them down in the name of Jesus. Pulling it, you are under my feet. The Bible says soon, God of peace will soon crush the devil under your feet. So you tell the devil, I can't operate under you, but I operate over you. For the Bible declares, for we are raised up together with Christ. I reign from the place of authority above you. I tell you what to do. You don't tell me what to do. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Every high thing. Every high thing. Tell your neighbor, every high thing. 
These are not people. These are spirits in the high places. Yeah, thing, yeah. Things. They are things that the queen's language, they call them, it's a contrary spirit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meaning that God's will for your life is to go south. Mm -hmm. But the spirit's assignment is to take you north. The Bible says, for you are going to be above only yes. and not yes. below. Yes. But there are some contrary spirit whose assignment is to keep you below. But tonight as I stand on this altar, I declare that whatever has been trying to pull you down has to break off of you now. Because God called you to be above and not beneath. Shout amen. 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 So every spirit that breaks your momentum every time you're building building just before you break through you have to start over another group of people have to leave your church i break that high thing that want to exalt itself above the knowledge of god i bind it now in the name of jesus i decree confusion in the camps of your enemies i declare wherever they meet they want to plan against your downfall may god strike that place with thunder Yeah. I'm very aggressive towards the devil because I lived in his house. Yeah. No, not literally, but I was once bound. I know what witches can do. Yeah. And many of us, we walk around feeling sorry. Well, I, you know, it's because I was born there. You, you don't understand. It's because there's a stronghold. Jesus. It's yeah. raised against you. Yeah. It has a mind. It has a will. Yeah. Yes. So you got to tell it the will of God. The knowledge of God. Yes, yes, yes. Tell your neighbor, God's will for my life, for my life. is to live a long life, to live a long life. And, not and not die young. So I don't care if there's Ebola, cancer, Corona, Corona 1, Corona 19, Corona 20, Corona 22. The will of God is for you to live long. Now, I don't care. I don't know about you and your household. I know a lot of people have died, but I have decided whatever has elevated itself against the will of God for my life. I don't care if they ever find me with the deadly stuff in my body. I stand on the will of God. I establish my faith on the promise of the Lord. Shout amen. amen. Yeah. Scripture one more time. Every high thing. Now watch this now. The Bible says, and bringing every thought into captivity. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand, after reading the scripture, that thoughts are spirits. Uh -huh. yes. Thoughts are spirits. Thoughts are living creatures. Yep. Uh -huh. They are living creatures. When you read Jeremiah chapter 11, verse chapter 29, verse 11, he says, for I know the thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because if you were to look in the mind of God, you will not find an empty mind you will find spirits in a form of thoughts yeah. that are just waiting to be released. Yes. So the, the, the plans, the other version said plans, but it's actually thoughts. So when God thinks about you, there's a thought for your finances. And that thought has an assignment over your life. So when God releases the thoughts for your finances, all of a sudden, while you're in prayer, Bakabo Shadaka. And the thought for finances hit you. And you are like, wait a minute. God shall provide all of money. You don't even know where that came from. It's a thought that came from. Tell your neighbor, I have been thinking. I have been thinking. You look at people that are killing themselves, jumping off the bridge, drinking poison, shooting themselves. They do that not because the devil appeared to them. Yeah. But because they are having what? Thoughts. Thoughts. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Thoughts. Yes. Yes. Come on, tell somebody I was weak, I was but weak. I changed my mind. Come on, I was weak. I, I don't have to sign up to Planet Fitness Center, LF Fitness. I don't have to go and start eating from Whole Foods, counting my calories. No, no, no. If I want to be strong, just allow the thoughts of God. Yes. Come on, somebody. Allow the thought. I don't have to win a million dollars to feel rich. Just the thoughts of God coming into my mind. But I put down every thought that the devil has against my life. Shout amen tonight. James chapter 4, please. James chapter 4. 
Are you getting blessed tonight? Yes. James chapter 4 verse 7. And I'm going to end with this. James chapter 4 verse 7. Since it's 8 p.m., some of you are like, Pastor Joseph, it's dinner time. <laughs> Everybody read that. Go. You cannot be a Christian who cannot submit. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Submission is godly. Yes. yes. Even Jesus, your Lord and your Savior, while he was on earth, submitted to his Father. Yes. Then who on earth do you think you are that you cannot submit to God? Wow. And when we talk about submitting to God, we are talking about submitting to the authority yeah. of God yeah. over your life. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Many people have lived a life of a curse because they dishonor the authority of yes. God over their lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just because your church has become bigger than Bishop doesn't mean now she has to submit to you. Come on. <laughs> Good Come on. Just because you can afford to buy some fried chicken cash doesn't mean nobody can ever tell you what to do. Submit to the Lord. Submitting to God means submitting to the people God has put over you. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. No matter how successful you are. He said the hardest thing to do is to maintain success. It's easy to fail. You fail, you get up. But maintaining success is very hard. It's very hard. And a lot of people have missed a blessing yeah. because they don't acknowledge what submitting to God is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You submit to God. Even if they say what you don't like, you still stay. Yes, ma'am? Your idea was brilliant. You still go ahead and put it on the side and you say, Lord, she said, I will do. Yes. See how quiet it's becoming? Yeah. It's good. When I talked about the devil, the witch, oh, man, oh, man, I'll submit. Oh, Lord. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how much Bishop paid him to say that. No, she didn't. She didn't. She didn't. It's in the scripture. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, submit to God. Yes. Submit to God. Submit to God. It's submit good. To God. If you want to run a long race yeah. and accomplish your assignment, mm -hmm. live a life of submitting. Yes. That's the truth. Yes. That's the yes. truth. Yes. It's a shame to see a lot of young successful men falling because they refuse to submit yeah. to the authority. Yeah. 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 So now what young people are doing now is they are finding a covering they can buy. Oh. Oh. So I send you a hundred thousand oh dollars, and when you see me doing something wrong, because if you rebuke me, there ain't no hundred thousand dollars coming. So I bought your covering. Yeah. Mm. Are you guys hearing me tonight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you still receive this word of the yes. Lord yeah. speaking to you? Yeah. Yeah. Submit to the Lord, yeah. because only then when you submit then you align yourself under the government of God. For unto us a child is given, and the government yes. shall be on his shoulders. Government is a structure. Yeah. It's a structure. Mm -hmm. So if you don't follow the structure of the government, you are operating illegal. Yeah. Yes, you are. Come on. And if there's anything the Holy Spirit does not like or endorse is anyone operating in disobedience. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about the spirit of soul. The spirit of soul is the spirit of disobedience. Yeah. It is. That's good. Yeah. And some people say that Saul remained king 20 years after he was fired. Yeah. And there are people that are still running churches and can preach really good, but they are, the Lord doesn't know them. Right. <laughs> They've been fired 20 years ago. They've been fired for 20 years. <laughs> God doesn't know them. And yet their people are still filling up and they're looking at the success of their ministries yes. as an endorsement from heaven. Wow. Yeah. It's not. Don't get don't get fooled yes. by that. 
good. Only after we submit to the Lord yeah. and to his governmental authority or structure. And then when we resist the devil, yeah. put yes. the scripture on there, please. And then the devil will flee. 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 Are we together tonight? Yeah. Resist the devil and he will flee. flee. So watch this now. Here, if you can be on the keyboard and, and minister with me the last few minutes. When we resist the devil, he will not take a walk out of our lives. Mm -hmm. He's not going to think about it. Mm -hmm. He's not going to decide and he loves me, loves me not. Should I go? Should I go not? I've been in here with him for a long time and maybe I can stick around. No, when you resist him, he doesn't go. He flees. Yes. Jesus says, for I saw Satan fall like what? Lightning. Lightning. That flee. Yeah. He can't walk. He can't run. He flees. Yeah. That's good. The Lord discharges a high anointing when we submit. I want you to stand with me and I want you to get here man I, I want you to get I want you to get your weapons of war that God has given you so on, on the weapons we have prayer which is a weapon tell your neighbor my prayer, my prayer is a weapon now tell your other neighbor please use it Right? So you have a weapon which is called prayer. Use it. And never pray silently when you're praying against the devil. Never. Don't go into silent prayer. When you are in a fight, you're not meditating. That's how some of you are losing the battle. You are supposed to be aggressive, resisting yes, the devil. Yes. And you are meditating. What are you meditating? It's not meditating that's going to make the devil flee. It's not meditating. Do me a favor. Romans chapter 10 verse 9, 10. These two scriptures, Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. Let me show you this. When we are quiet, we think we are spiritual. When we are supposed to be aggressive, we think we are very spiritual. Without knowing we are breaking the protocol, the governmental system of the realm of the spirit. We think we are. Everybody read go. One more time. One more time. One more time. What does the word confess mean? Speak. Speak. Is that you being silent? No. So you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart one believes and unto righteousness and with thy mouth confession is made unto salvation so watch this believing and confession are supposed to be going into two different destinations believing and confession they are sisters they are twins but they are going to two different destinations tell your neighbor confess the reason the preacher wants you to confess I am healed yes. is not so God can hear your confession. God sees your faith. Yeah, right. But you know who can see your faith? The devil. Oh. So every time we confess I am healed, we are not letting Jesus know our faith. Jesus knows your silent confession, but the devil doesn't. So when you declare I am healed, the devil goes, wait a minute. Yeah. She's healed. Everybody back off. Hallelujah. Now, when you believe Believing is for the Lord. Confession is for the devil. Did you hear that? When you are believing in your heart, the Lord sees your heart. Come on, somebody. For the, for the Lord says, for a man looks at the what? Outside. But God looks at the what? Heart. So when you are in prayer, fighting, don't pray silently. When it's a fight, confess devil my child is healed come on say amen. amen my finances are coming my church is released my leadership is coming come on 
God is sending me pastors, worship leaders, musicians, media team, give us, shout amen. You are confessing all of that. That is your fight. Don't be silent in warfare. Yeah. The devils are looking around saying, what is he doing? We don't know. What is he saying? We don't know. But you resist. How do you resist? I release. Yeah. I declare that yeah. 1,000 drug addicts in my city are coming to our church to be delivered. Yeah. When you say it, then the devil goes, oh, let them go, 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 go. How is that possible? Because you spoke in the atmosphere. When you release in the atmosphere, then it is released. For the Bible says what you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Tell your neighbor, God is waiting on you. So stop sitting over there. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall know. God is waiting on you. The tools are in your hands. He has given you the power of the prayer and then the other weapon is the word. Speak the word. Tell your neighbor, speak the word. So as you are fighting, as you are in prayer, use the word. Let me get, let me get Psalm 91, Psalm 91 verse 5. Let me show you this. Psalm 91 verse 5. Tell your neighbor, speak the word. In prayer, use the word you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day so while you are in prayer against witches against voodooists against all the, the demonic stuff you walk around and you're declaring that for thou shall not be afraid what are you doing you are dispatching the weapons two years ago i was in prayer Based on that scripture, I was in prayer when they just announced that the corona, uh, coronavirus has come in America. And people came to me in church and they said, should we shut down because they are recommending to shut down. I went into prayer. I said, I cannot decide until I consult from God. Yes. This is not my church, it's his. And I prayed and the Lord came, stood next to me and he said, you're not shutting the door. You will, in fact, you will be having services every night. And God says, but I am the Lord your God. You will not bury not one person in your church. Right? So I stood up and I announced it. Oh, you should have seen people. Not our members. Our members were clapping, excited. We were getting inboxes, people cursing us out. And they even called the police on us. They called the police on us. And guess what? The word of the Lord has come to pass. You know why? Because we've been using the scripture as a what? As a weapon. Verse 6, please. Verse 6. Watch this now. Tell your neighbor, use the word, use the word. As, a as a weapon. Verse 6. Now, everybody read. Go. Uh huh. Now, that word pestilent is a virus or a plague. A plague. So, God is saying you will not be afraid of a virus. Now, how many of you know if you are a scientist? or you know anything about medicine. How many of you know that bacteria and viruses are living organisms? Yeah. They are living organisms that have life. Yeah. Now the question is the life that they are using, who gave them life? Yeah. Who gave them life? Yeah. Is it God who gave them life? No, why? Because they come to destroy what God created. So the life that the viruses are using is not from God. So when you stand up and you're using the word, then you are directly going at the life of the virus and say, you cannot destroy me. Yes. Tell your neighbor, use the word as a weapon. That's why God says to Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, do, he says, do not be afraid. Do not let the law of this word depart from your mouth. Many dead on it day and night that you may prosper so you're walking around in your pajamas while your kids are asleep speaking the words switching back and forth tongues swahili spanish 
English Nakarabo Shandaka, thou shalt not be afraid. None of my family members will die from COVID in the name of Jesus. No one in my family dies from cancer because the cancer cell is using a demonic spirit. So I bind every cancer cell in my blood, in the blood of my wife, in my blood of my children and their children for the next 500 years. No cancer in my blood. Tell your neighbor, use the word. The blood of Jesus is a weapon. The Bible says, for they overcame him by the word of the by the word by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb is so powerful that as an example of what the blood of Jesus would do in the Old Testament, they put the blood of an animal, and the angel of death could not come in. How much the blood of Jesus? Come on. Yes. That for four thousand years after Abel was killed, his blood was still speaking. How much more the blood of Jesus? Use the blood. I said use the blood. Put the blood on the door of your church. Take the blood and put it around the, 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 the corners of your church sanctuary. And say no witch will successfully walk in here with their witchcraft to put a curse on this church. We apply the blood of the lamb, the blood on the ashes, the blood of the musician, the blood on the deacon, the blood on the lady with the attitude, the blood. Come on, tell your neighbor, use the blood. And then another tool God has given you is the spirit. The spirit. The spirit. Paul says, with all prayers, pray in the what? Spirit. Because the spirit is a weapon. The spirit was not given to give you goosebumps. The spirit was not given to give you tongues. He was given to release and to launch to deploy him into cities and territories and bloodlines and last names declaring lord that couple in our family in our church that are having issues in our in their marriage i release the holy spirit upon them that they will not be fighting anymore the spirit of division is destroyed by the power of the holy spirit and before you know it, Pastor, my marriage is sweeter than before. You'll be like, thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands and pray in tongues. Come on. Amen.